Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we will be working on our part 3 for .NET and Paint series. For this prototype, we will make an application where a transparent image will bounce around the border. This image will be drawn on the screen by using the paint event and it will demonstrate a good use for PNG transparent images inside a Windows form. Let's take a look at the demo. As you can see, uh, the transparent image is bouncing around in the border and although it's a transparent image we can actually see the background through the image as well so this one is right now directly being painted by using the timer and the paint event okay so to get started let's create a new project in visual studio but before we get started first download the images from the moai city website so once you downloaded and extracted them, I have extracted mine on the desktop. Let's take a look at inside. So inside you have a gold map, you have a mechanical keyboard background. So these are two wallpapers and then you have that transparent square image. Click on create new project. I'm going to pick the Windows form app. So if yours doesn't show up on the side, just type in Windows here. Okay, it should be the first one that says Windows, uh, Windows form app, .NET Windows forms. Click next. Let's name the project to Paint Movement Project YCT. Click Next. Uh, for the framework, we can leave it at .NET 6. Now click Create. Right, to get started, first let's resize the form. So right here, let's resize this one to 800 by 600. Resize like this. Let's go ahead and change the um, text of the form to Okay, I named it to Paint Movement Project More ICT. And let's go and find the background option. So find the one that says background image. Click on the three dots. Okay, now navigate to the folder where you extracted the pictures. I'm going to select all the pictures here. Click open. Okay, and now you can see the pictures are showing up on the list, although they might be slightly bigger. So this is the mechanical keyboard one. This is the gold map one and there's the transparent image. Okay, so let's just click on the gold map one and click OK. So right now the map is slightly bigger for the uh, project size. So we're going to go here to background image layout and change that from tile to stretch. Okay, so we're going to need only one component from the toolbox. So that's going to be the timer. So let's just go here and find the timer. Drag and drop the timer to the form. Let's name this one movement timer. Okay, uh, change enable to true and set interval to 20. Okay, and while the timer is selected uh, inside the properties window, click on the little lightning bolt icon there. Here we can add the event for the timer. So we can say movement timer event. Okay, so as you press enter on the event, it will add it to the C sharp script that's attached to the form. Okay, so let's go back to the design view and now click on the form, not the timer. So inside the form, there's a um, event called paint. So that's the one that we need. So we're gonna call this one on paint event. Um, actually call this one form paint event. Okay, so the paint event um, sort of controls all the events that we can sort of um, trigger to draw something on the screen. So this um, drawing can be of any sort of files or it could even be like lines or squares or circles. So we're going to use that to our advantage to load a PNG image that is fully transparent. Okay, after you type that up, make sure you press enter. So now both of the events have been added. So first, let's go ahead and add our variables that we need. So I'm going to go right on top of the constructor that says public form one. 
right here, make some space. And then it's going to be majority of them are going to be integers. So we'll say int position x is equal to zero. All of these variables are going to be used for the image that we're going to draw on the screen, that being the square. Okay, so this is the square images position x. And int. And then we do one for position y. We need a speed variable for the y location, so how fast the image is going to move up and down. And then we also need one for the x direction, left and right. Um, the image will be 150 pixels tall. And the image will be 150 pixels wide. Okay, so we're creating a new instance of an image called square and we will load our picture inside of the image. So right here inside of form one, I'm gonna go under this constructor here will load first so whenever the program runs it will call this constructor and it will initialize the components such as any picture boxes any background images anything that we put on there everything will be invoked through this function and then right after this function we want to load the picture inside of this image and let's go here and say square equal image dot from file oh actually we're not doing from file uh, because we already imported the images to our resources here gold map mechanical keyboard and transparent square we can load it directly from the properties so we can say properties the resources to gold map and then that will attach that picture to this square image so at the moment um although we're loading the image if i start the game as you can see right now the image is nowhere to be found although we have loaded the image into the image class here right and the reason behind that is because it's not being painted or drawn anywhere so the paint event controls what gets drawn where on the screen and we need to invoke this one in order for that square to be sh uh, to show up on the screen basically okay so let's do that now graphics let's call it canvas is equals to e dot graphics so the E where we're getting this from is the event that's being passed through. So the form is sending the E over. So we're just saving the information about the form inside of this canvas. So we're going to use the form completely as a canvas for this application. Let's go to canvas, not draw image. So right now we're going to give the command to draw the image inside of the form. And then we we'll say we want to draw the square. So the square's position x is the x position. So this is where we create all of these variables. Is so when we use the draw image function here, we can actually put in all the uh, data sets that we're actually going to need for that one image. Okay, and then x position, position y. Width and then height. Okay, so right now it's going to um, spawn the square into zero, 00 position. So it's going to be around just here. So if we run this program now, as you can see, it's loaded the map. Oh, my mistake. I actually loaded the map instead of the um, transparent picture, transparent square. Let's go ahead and try that again. Okay, so I stretched it all the way through. Uh, oh, I'll put the height of the capital H. Okay, it needs to be like the lowercase h. Because the capital height, um, capital H height deals with the height of the entire form. So we thought we wanted to paint the entire picture all over, all throughout the form. So that's why it draw uh, but that's why it's drawn it like that basically so if i try again okay so as you can see the picture is now being spawned through the c sharp 
um, script. Okay, so you, we use pretty much all of the variables that we created, but except for the two, so the speed x and speed y. Now, uh, to move this picture box, what we need to do is we need to, with each frame, we will need to delete everything from the screen, redraw it, delete everything, redraw it again. And this is why the timer is very useful for this. So we can pretty much use the timer to change the position of the image by uh, manipulating the values, the position X and position Y, because that's where they're going to be drawn each time. So if you change the value of them, so right now if I change the X value to say um, 300, right, uh, it should draw it slightly in the middle. So they go exactly in the middle. So you've drawn the um, square right here. So if you manipulate these two values, right, then we're able to achieve a animation by using the timer. I'm going to reset that back to zero. And speed X, we can set that to five as well. Okay, so inside the main timer, let's go and say position X is going to be plus equals to speed X, right? So we're incrementing the value of the position X by the value of the speed x so with each millisecond with each frame is going to add that much so it's going to add five to x each time so that way it's going to move five pixels forward each frame okay let's do that for position y speed y okay and now uh, right now if you run this one we'll see something slightly weird um, if it does let me run this Cool. I missed the plus equals to here. Okay, so although the timer is enabled, right? Um, I think it is. Let me stop this for a second. Yep, the timer is enabled and everything else, but somehow it's not moving. So although we put every everything inside, so that should be incrementing. I know that is because obviously the timer is working. So why isn't this moving the reason it's not moving is because we only told the program to draw this once so what it's doing at the moment is only drawing this once and it's done because it doesn't have any more um frames to draw so what we need to use is this thing called this dot invalidate what this is going to do with each tick it's going to erase everything from the screen and force the paint to paint that frame again, but with new values. Okay, so now when we start this, we should see something really weird. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a lot of glitch, but I can still see that box moving, right? The reason I have a lot of glitch is because at the moment I don't have double buffered enabled. So it does um, have a bit of a glitch when the double buffered is not available. So uh, inside, when you click on the form, go to the properties window go to double buffered and then click on true so set the double buffer to true okay and then let's start here again so now as you can see it's moving but what it's doing is it's not really uh, physically moving it it's being redrawn with those values that are attached to this okay so what we want to do now, now that it's moving down, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it bounces off each corner of the screen. Okay, and that's a fairly simple process. Let's do an if statement here and say if position x plus width is greater than this dot client size dot width or position x is less than the same one right so what's going to happen is we're checking if the square goes to this end of the screen so the position x plus to width right this end of the screen if it does or if it's on this end of the screen which is minus one because minus uh, sorry one so zero is around here and any screen so if you look at the form zero is about here Right, and then whatever the size of the width is around here. So that's why we're checking for the X position plus the width to make sure that you know we don't go past it. Okay, and if that happens, that simple process is we're just going to reverse the value of speed X, which is going to be equal to minus speed X. 
All right, so once we reverse the value, so instead of the box moving this way, it will turn and then move that way. And if it goes hits this way, then it's going to reverse it again, so it moves back the other way. Okay, let's do an else if statement here. Okay, and Visual Studio has actually completed it for me, which is great. So we're going to do an else if to say position y plus height is greater than this the client size the height so basically we're checking for the width before now we're checking for the height and then we're doing the same thing again for the position and then we'll do speed y is equals to minus speed y okay so just to go over the script again uh, basically we have our integer values here we got our square image class we're assigning the square image here right and then inside the timer we just um adding the values to the position x and position y and then we're checking if any of the four boundaries are hit in the if statement now in this one we're basically saying that you know delete everything from the scene and redraw so force the form to redraw again with the new values so that's how we actually see the animation and this is the last event that's actually drawing the square onto the position of whatever it is on the screen okay so let's try and uh, run this one now Okay, as you can see it's actually bouncing perfectly off all four boundaries okay so let's try to change the background so in the form if you just click on the form there go to the background image property there and then we'll just select the second image that we import which is the mechanical keyboards one so we'll just click ok here's the keyboards let's run it off we go Uh, thank you for watching this video hopefully you find it useful uh, i'm going to be doing a few more videos on paint.net so make sure you subscribe and like the video if you find this kind of stuff useful we'll see you on the next one